Good morning. I'm John D'Alessandro, the Association Secretary of the Firefighters Association. I want to thank everybody for taking some time out to come here today. Um, we're here because back in 2001, the Firefighters Association commissioned a study to try to determine the economic value that volunteer firefighters provide the citizens of New York. We updated that study in 2016, and then we did it again in 2023. So that's why we're here. We want to get the study out there, especially while the legislature is in session. This is critical information for them to have when they discuss and debate various issues relating to the volunteer fire service. Um, one thing that I need to make very clear, this study is not a commentary on how we provide fire and emergency response in the state of New York. That structure of how we protect the citizens is comprised of equal and equally important parts, volunteer firefighters and career firefighters. The study is a picture of reality as it exists today, and especially the economic uh, sense of reality that the volunteer fire service brings to the state of New York. Um, at this point, I'm going to turn it over to President Tace to make a few remarks. John, thank you very much. Good morning. On behalf of the state's volunteer firefighters, I welcome you to our FASNI office. The latest economic impact report underscores the importance and value of volunteer firefighting within New York State. Without the dedication and service of over 80,000 brave volunteers throughout the state, local taxpayers would face significant financial burdens to fund this type of emergency response that they are accustomed to. Our volunteer firefighters train extensively to be able to respond to the neighborhoods in a time of need. And we are proud of what we do and our part to keep this great state safe and taxpayers' costs down. Volunteer firefighters proudly serve our neighbors and local communities on a daily basis, but they are also an important part of the state's overall response plans for major emergencies and disasters. They have become more frequently over the years. We hope this report will help make it clear the value of our volunteer firefighters within New York State. My goal for my term as president of the Firefighters Association of the State of New York is to recruit 10,000 additional firefighters and EMS providers in New York State. Providing this quality professional emergency response services, our fellow New Yorkers expect and depend on. This report and our work with our partners in state and local governments will help us to achieve this goal. Thank you very much for your time today. So why, why did we commission this report? The report is an important part of a bigger picture that we need to address. Uh, contrary to popular belief, most of the fire and emergency response in the state of New York and frankly in the country is done by volunteers. You know, you watch Backdraft, you watch Chicago Fire, people drive by their local firehouse and think that there was a paid career staff in there 24 seven. The exact opposite is true. Now, unfortunately, in that context, the numbers of volunteer firefighters have dropped dramatically since 2000, when there were about 180,000 volunteer firefighters in the state. We're sitting at around 80,000 today. At the same time that number has dropped, the number of calls departments receive has gone up significantly. The complexity of those calls has become more complex. The uh, times where we have to provide mutual aid and go outside our local coverage areas increases. You saw that recently with the big snowstorm in Buffalo. Uh, many departments from the Capital District and beyond were sent out there to help our brothers and sisters, both career and volunteer, because they were simply overwhelmed. So the study provides some context when we talk to state leaders about giving us more tools, more incentives to attract people to the volunteer fire service and to retain the ones they have. They have actual fiscal numbers that they compare it to. So when we say give us X, they can see that giving us X provides a $4.7 billion return. So it's a, it's a good economic policy to be following. With that, uh, hopefully take any questions at this point. 
A question that I've got, uh, coming from the North Country, it, the problem with getting volunteer firefighters is, in part, it is now more difficult to become a volunteer firefighter. I know training requirements are up. I believe that there's um, some legislation that's even changing what some of the benefits from, from the state for volunteer firefighters are. So is there anything uh, specific that you'd like to see the state take charge in and maybe making it easier to recruit? Well, uh, first and foremost, volunteer firefighters in the state of New York cannot receive any compensation whatsoever. So we've got to try to provide things that don't have an economic value. Uh, in terms of the training, the bottom line is on a fire scene, on an emergency scene, you want the best trained people possible. So the Firefighters Association does not advocate less training. In fact, we support more training. And training can be gotten on any level. It can be given in your local department. It can be given in the county. It can be given at the State Fire Academy. Uh, we here at FASNI provide webinars and hands-on training. So, uh, you know, simply a better trained firefighter is just a better firefighter. Um, it does take time. Um, back in 2011, I believe, we also did some focus groups because we wanted to try to understand why people were not becoming volunteer firefighters and EMS personnel. And three things came out of those focus groups. The first thing, the number one thing people said, it stands in the way from becoming a volunteer was the lack of time okay the second thing was I'm not that type of person I'm the one kind of going away from an emergency not running towards it and the third was even if I wanted to do it I don't know how to do it so for the last more than a decade we've been waging a, a public outreach communications campaign uh, with the tagline is there a fire in you and we tried to address those three things um, unlike the career side where you have to work a shift, you have a set schedule. On the volunteer side, you have some more flexibility. So when you first start, for example, um, and you want to be an interior structural firefighter, you do have to take that certification class. So the, the time demand is greater in the beginning. But once you get certified, you have some flexibility in determining how much time you want to give to this pursuit. Okay, you don't have to respond to every call. You don't have to be at every training class. You could you know, do the minimum or you could take it as far as you want. And there are tremendous opportunities in the volunteer fire service. So yeah, t you do have to make a time commitment. There's no doubt about that. But the fact is you can try to work it into your own life. Um, you also have to realize too that a volunteer fire department, unlike a career department, sort of has two halves. One is the operational half, the responders. The other is the administrative half. So you can become part of your local fire department, say if you're a bookkeeper, You've got that skill set and you've got a couple hours a month that you want to devote to the community we'd love to have that skill set and i can tell you we'll put it to great use thank you what would you like to see in the final state budget <laughs> that's a good question um you know there are two proposals out there right now one is a training fund which we wholeheartedly support again going back to the previous question the more training the better and if we can help encourage people to at least in that initial training defray some of the costs that they incur because you, you have to remember as volunteers you know we're, we're not in the station when a call comes in generally we're at home we have to go to the station or go to the scene we're spending our own gas money oftentimes we have to in many departments uh, sad reality is we have to buy our own equipment um, so anything like that training stipend fund reimbursement for expenses you know reasonable expenses in the pursuit of being a volunteer firefighter or EMS provider. Those type of things um, are, are little incentives. Now, will any one of them solve this problem? When you go from 120,000 to 80,000, um, none, not any one of those things is gonna solve the problem, but they're all part of that toolkit that we can use to convince men and women that we need to. You know, um, all the, all the best technology, all the greatest equipment, all the newest trucks, it means nothing if you don't have dedicated men and women to put into their hands. Um, and you know, as you, as you can see, society has changed and, and part of that change, uh, part of that more of a uh, nomadic life, you know, young people, they, they chase relationships, they go away to school, they, they move for a job. Um, it's, it's not like it was years ago where you, you, know, you had multi-generations joining a volunteer fire department. So we've got to try to figure ways to combat that. Also, um, if I could interrupt, yeah. um, the, in the New York State budget and, and what we had in 2001, FASD was very instrumental of getting 
a $200 income tax credit for the volunteer firefighters on your New York State income tax credit. That's in 2001. Here we are in 2023, still at $200. Cost of living has gone up drastically. Like John said, the cost of the volunteer firefighter doing the work. We'd like to, we're advocating to raise that to $1,000 to the, to the volunteer firefighters. Uh, that helps all volunteer firefighters in New York State, not just our property owners or you know, ones like that, but ones that live at home with mom and dad or they have their apartments that don't pay property tax, they still can get a benefit for what they're doing. So we're advocating that we can raise that to $1,000. Hopefully we can be successful. You know, uh, also in answer to your question, another piece of legislation that we strongly support and have been advocating for many years is an increase in what they call the Volunteer Firefighter Benefit Law. It's our workers' compensation. The way it stands right now, if I'm at a fire scene and I unfortunately fall off a ladder, the rate of compensation that I could get from that program is far less than somebody who works in a factory and falls off a ladder. So we're just asking for parity. You know, you, you cannot expect men and women to volunteer to do this job without them knowing that the state of New York has their back if they unfortunately get hurt. And let's face it, despite all the precautions we take, despite all the, tra despite all the training, it is inherently dangerous. And at some point in time, people are going to get hurt. They just want to know that their families are going to be provided for should that day come. Uh, yeah. Um, so we have numbers from 2021 uh, about the firefighter and EMS shortages. How, how are those numbers different, uh, I guess, today? In terms of the number of Yeah, people? just um, how, yeah, how, uh, how are the shortages like, uh, is there is there less? Is there is the the shortage? Is it greater now than it was in twenty twenty one? It's uh, it, it's going it's going in the wrong direction. As I said, um, the, you know the sort of benchmark we use is back in the early two thousands. There were about one hundred twenty thousand men and women that were volunteer firefighters and EMS personnel. We are right today down around eighty thousand. <coughs> so you can see the significant decline, and perhaps more importantly, that decline continues. Um, we're not recruiting as many new people, and we're losing people out the back door. You know, it's the analogy that we use. You know, we're not bringing them in the front door, and we're losing them out the back door. Um, unfortunately, when you look at the breakdown, when you look at the demographics of that 80,000 pool of firefighters, a lot of them are me. Okay, they're older. Um, they're all going to age out. A block of them are going to age out at the same time. And that day of reckoning is coming. So, you know, while, while the decline over the last decade has sort of been somewhat arithmetic, somewhat gradual, there's going to be a geometric loss of men and women in the coming years if we don't figure out how to bring more into the service. Now, if someone does want to join, what should they do? What should they do? First and foremost, um, I, I know personally, and I know from, you know, firefighters I talk to around the state, Many people drive by a firehouse every day on their way going to work and coming home. And they think about, geez, you know, I, I wonder what goes, behind, what goes on behind those bay doors. So the first thing I would say to anyone is, if you have the slightest curiosity or inclination, spend a few minutes, stop at the firehouse, preferably on a night when you're having a class or doing a drill, and talk to people. Find out what it's all about. Again, I think a misnomer is most people think if I, if I become a volunteer firefighter, I got to be riding the truck and I got to jump off and pull a hose into a burning building. Nothing could be further from the truth. There are dozens and dozens of jobs in a volunteer fire department. And like I said, if you've got a skill set and some commitment and time, we'll put it to good use. So first and foremost, go talk to your local department. They can lay out, you know, based on what, what role you want to play, what the process is, how long it will take, and what the time demands will be on you to fulfill that role. April 22nd and 23rd, Fazzy is going to be entering our 12th consecutive year of Recruit New York weekend. Uh, we will be asking our volunteer firefighters across the entire state to open up their doors and make it uh, in, invite the public in to see what you do. Uh, it's a tremendous weekend. We've had some tremendous success over it in 12 years, and we're only looking forward to it again this year. Uh, that's April 22nd and 23rd in the local departments in your areas. Any more questions? 
Right, the folks be available for one-on-ones if anybody needs them. Thank you. Thanks very much again for, your for time coming on. I appreciate it. Thank you.